In today's video, we'll be taking a look at a problem of 3D printing called Z-axis wobble, which is quite common and pretty hard to get rid of. Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be taking a look, a look at the problem called Z-axis wobble. Um, I've had this problem with uh, some of my printers and for most of them I've been able to get rid of it um, but there's one which still has that feature. Um, what I'm talking about is when you have a 3D print and the edges um, in the z-axis direction um, have a distinct feature that somewhat looks like a threaded rod then you probably have z-axis wobble. What's actually happening when you have z-axis wobble is the following. The threaded, the threaded rod and the nut that is mounted on the threaded rod um, is doing something like either a movement in a circle or even worse, um, the nut itself with the threaded rod right through it is doing something like a belly dance. And this leads to your whole um, X and Y axis assembly moving in a circle. And that is basically showing um, on each print when each layer is added on top of the other. And these layers are slightly offset in the X and Y or if you have a uh, different setup only in one direction. And this will give you edges or slight offset in the edges um, with each print. And this is pretty hard to get rid of. Um, the issue is that for most um, of these nuts, um, it is basically impossible to get the bore and the thread exactly into the middle. Um, with very expensive nuts, um, this error is very small, but if you use uh, simple, um, simple threaded rods uh, like used for, for, for nuts and bolts, um, you will have that. And worse, if the bore is not um, exactly centered, but offset. Because every time you get one revolution of the, uh, of the threaded rod, the nut will actually make a movement like this. And this will amplify because if this is connected to your, to your, um, to your table, um, you'll have a movement like this. So it's really hard to get rid of this and there are some things that you can do right and there are other things that you can do wrong. And me, for example, with my Robin 3D printer, I got it completely wrong in the first in the first go. Um, this here is the part that was holding uh, the z-axis. Um, the normal rod would go through here. The threaded rod would go through here. It would be a bigger one, but no matter. And uh, the nut would sit in here. Now I had the problem that I had the slightly off-center nut, and it would do a movement all the way around here like this and it would do this slight belly dance and because the nut was completely enclosed in here um, this would actually propagate through all of my setup and I would get edges that just weren't pretty and uh, if I did something that was supposed to be um, exactly one measurement or the other it would be slightly offset and I would have to add some of uh, well some extra space so I could thread a rod or, or push something through. Now I redid the whole piece and the new one looks like this. First of all, the first and the biggest change is that the nut is no longer completely held. Um, it is only fastened at the top so if it's moving in the belly dance fashion um, it won't propagate that much into the whole assembly. 
Also, um, there is a slight raise right in the middle here. It's a bit hard to see. Now you can see it right here. Um, because if you get these nuts, you will notice that there's a slight elevation right around them. And this slight elevation is more or less around the center of it. And the movements that you're getting is not as, um, as bad around the center than it is around the edges. So, if you have an issue like this, you should make sure that you get your z-axis raise value from the middle of the shaft and not the outside. Now what you can do is, you can use um, a, a, a separate setup around the nut that is holding the nut and that actually only has like a very centered push rod uh, to your z-axis assembly, but that is very hard to build. So for this go, I've for one, I've elongated the the part that holds against the shaft so it can actually um, put more force on top of that before bending it. And on the other hand, I've made the enclosure that holds the nut shorter so there is a slight bit of movement that I can actually avoid from getting onto the Z-axis assembly. Um, there is a shaft in here so I can actually add another part right down the middle here. I can see better. Um, so I can hold on to the nut. There's, there will just be this little arm that I can glue in there that will hold on to the nut so the nut can't escape um, the mount. Uh, for my printer that wouldn't be a problem, um, but if you have a printer where you have uh, where you have some friction moving down, you might want to add that. I'm, I'm not going to need it. Now, if you look at it in more detail, suppose this was your threaded rod and uh, this was the nut going around it and this was off-center, you would have a movement like this and you can actually see it moving in the X and Y axis. Um, worse if you have it move like this, you can actually see that there's that there would be a lot of error in your print. Now I've managed to get this running with a lot of my printers, but um, my first printer, the Robin, was uh, still missing that feature. Um, and also, these parts are going to be um, on GitHub within about a week. I've got some small kinks to work out, but I'm pretty happy with them. So. Uh, to mount this, I'm, I'm going to use the same assembly that I had before. I have uh, two uh, linear bearings. They actually fit in here quite nicely. I will be adding just this tiniest amount of glue uh, to get them from actually being able to move in there. Um, I've got a spacer and uh, then the second linear bearing is added and then I have these, these top hats here. Um, and that will also be glued on. And when all of this is in place, I've got a very rigid setup. Um, the uh, the Z-axis gantry holding the extruder is still going um, through here like it did before. I didn't change anything there. But you can actually see that the the parts holding the nut have become a lot smaller. And uh, since the nut is only used to, to push this upwards and let it slide back down, and it ne only needs to hold the nut in here, um, this should suffice. And I hope that the effect that I had been seeing before, that I have this distinctive um, pattern in, my, in my, all my edges up to the z-axis, I hope it's going to be better. I'm pretty sure it will be. Um, and I can use most of what I had before. Um, I added an extra part here for the um, for the end switch, uh, which is going to make it easier to uh, get the end switch um, to find this part. It used to sit down here and uh, there's not a lot of space here. This is going to improve the overall build. Um, I'm going to put this together. I'm going to try it out. I'll be adding some uh, 
some footage at the end of this video. Um, but for a start, that's about it. This is one of my. This is basically the first printer that I invented, and uh, there are still some small kinks in there, but I'm I'm working them out one by one, and uh, I just thought I made this video to explain some of the things that are happening. Once again, thanks for watching, and bye-bye.